The Great Depression, the longest, deepest and most widespread depression of the 20th century. The economy crumbled, the stock market crashed, millions of jobs were lost, this was a nasty time. What we're going to do in this video is go over exactly what happened in the Great Depression and how we can relate this back to today. There are definitely a few things that need to be pointed out. Now, it all started with the Roaring Twenties, and we need to pay particular attention to this period because it's very similar to what's going on over this recent decade. Hmm. The Roaring Twenties, it's the build-up to the Great Depression. The 1920s was a period of great economic prosperity. Uh, people were recovering from World War I, construction was beginning to take place all across the nation, innovation was growing, unemployment was getting lower and lower, and more people were being able to afford things they usually wouldn't. Before World War I, cars were a luxury good. In the 20s, mass-produced vehicles became commonplace in the US and Canada. And this was largely thanks to Henry Ford and his Model T. More than 15 million Model Ts were sold from 1908 to 1927. Not only this, but other technologies were becoming more widespread. Uh, radios were used to mass communicate and mass market to large groups of people. This was not possible before. The cinema, as the English would call it, started to boom. Aviation was becoming a thing, and the economy was beginning to thrive. And because of this, people had jobs and excess money to spend. But they already bought the Ford Model T. They bought the clothes and the things that they wanted. Where else could they put their money? Hmm, why not the stock market? My neighbor John just invested in the stock market, and he's made a lot of money. I'm going to do the same. You see, what you need to realize is that during this time, the stock market was on fire. Over those nine years, the Dow Jones went from under 1,000 points to 5,600 points, an increase of five times the amount. It's no wonder everyone thought that they were 19th century investing geniuses and they were not afraid to put all of their savings in the stock market. It's kind of similar to what's been happening over the recent decade in the stock market. Uh, over this decade, it's gone up more than three times the amounts from 8,500 points to 27,600 points. Just like back then, everyone thinks that they are investing geniuses, but there's only so long that that can go on. Uh, and we all saw this in the very late stage of 1920 when things began to crumble. You had the cook, the janitor, your neighbor, every man and his dog investing in the stock market as if the only thing it could do was keep going up. But then when you looked at the economy, hang on, it slowed down. They aren't selling as many Model Ts as before. There was less construction going on and ultimately less profit being made. Then, Thursday, October the 24th, 1929 comes along, which was about to be a very dark day in the market. The bells rang in the morning and by the end of the day, panicked investors had caused the market to go down by 11%. Imagine going on holiday for one day, then coming back and seeing 11% of your money down the drain. Panic began to sink in. The janitor, the cook, your neighbor John, they realized they never fully understood what they were investing in and they began to pull out their money by the bucket load. The week after, in a day which is now known as Black Tuesday, the markets fell by a further 12% and the Great Depression had well and truly kicked off. You know, in 1929, the unemployment was low at 3.2%. The very next year, after this crash, unemployment had gone up to 8.7%. 1931, it was 15.1%. And by 1933, it went to as high as 24.9%. That's one quarter of the entire population not being able to work or provide for their families. These Americans, they had to wait in long food lines for the hope of some free food, or they resorted to begging or selling anything they could on the street. Farmers had been hit particularly hard by this crisis as well. The prices of their crops had been slashed and revenue was drying up. Not only this, but they were hit by a severe drought and a range of dust storms in a period which is now known as the Dust Bowl. It was not a fun time to exist, let's just say that. 
Then what happened is the banks started failing. Over a third of the USA's national banks in the three years following 1929 failed. So just imagine you've worked your whole life, you've been good with your money, and you saved up for retirements. Then you read in the paper that your bank has failed and you can't retrieve any of your savings. This is the situation we're dealing with. It happened to many American citizens in the Great Depression. And as you can imagine, many of these citizens, they wanted answers. And who did they look to? The extremely wealthy and the government. John D. Rockefeller, one of the wealthiest at the time, he said this, These are days when many are discouraged. In the 93 years of my life, depressions have come and gone, prosperity has always returned, and will again. But the real problem the people had was with the leader of the country. Herbert Hoover, the president at the time, was often called the do-nothing president. He had policies where he thought it was best for minimal government intervention when it came to the economy. So he sort of let the situation play out until 1932. The people demanded he did something and he came up with the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. Here they sanctioned lending of $2 billion to banks, railroads and other companies to try get that economy back on track. It's actually sort of similar to what they're doing in 2020, which is a whole lot of landing money. Obviously not to the same extent though. But people considered this too little too late. Hoover had gotten a bad reputation. Uh, so much so that newspapers that were used for warmth during those times were known as Hoover blankets. Trouser pockets turned inside out to signal people had no money were known as Hoover flags. His reputation was poor, people were poor, they wanted him out. And it was in 1932 where Franklin D. Roosevelt won the USA election against Hoover comfortably. But the situation that Roosevelt got elected into, it was tough. Now this graph gives you a brief indication of the damage done from 1929 to 1932. Industrial production fell 46%, wholesale prices down 32%, foreign trade down 70%, and unemployment rose by 607%. Yet, it was not just the USA who were struggling. The Brits, the Germans, the French, their economies were getting demolished as well. And they weren't happy about it, especially the Germans. Their economy had been devastated. Unemployment got to 30%, savings disappeared due to banks losing money, production was slashed, and the Germans were miserable and looking for someone to blame. That's when a guy by the name of Adolf Hitler comes to power and World War II begins. Now, the interesting thing is that the start of World War II was one of the main factors that lifted the USA out of the depression. Because the one thing that you need in a war is lots of production, military equipment, medical supplies, transportation, it's all needed to fight a war, and so the economy started firing up again. Also, the other thing the war created was jobs. People had to fight to protect the country, and thus unemployment started to decrease. So, seemingly contradictory, it was the war that kick-started the USA out of the depression. Along with the New Deal, of course, introduced by President Roosevelt, uh, this New Deal was made to strengthen American business, lower unemployment, and protect the public. But to do this, it was tax time. Federal taxes actually tripled between 1933 and 1940 to pay for these initiatives, as well as new programs for the poor, such as Social Security. As you can see, it was in 1932 when Roosevelt got elected, and the economy started to recover around 1933, along with the New Deal. But it was really the war that started to spike up the economy in the late 30s. Now, the interesting thing for those investors out there, and I think this is really important that you take a note of this, is the stock market didn't reach its all-time high again for a further 30 years. As you can see, it was in 1929 when the stock market peaked at 5,696 points in the Dow. 30 years later, in 1959, those investors who invested finally got their money back with the Dow at 5,700 points. So, there's really a couple of key lessons that we can take away from this. The first is when everyone's getting greedy, just like they were in the roaring 20s, 
watch out. The problem with greed in the stock market is that it causes prices to get high. One of the worst things you can do when buying a stock is pay too much money for it. It's the same with real estate. So watch out for greed. The other thing is look for opportunity when people are fearful. The best time to buy stocks was in the Great Depression because stocks had gone down by so much and became rarely cheap. This is why the best investor in the world, Warren Buffett, he says be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. The period around the Great Depression was a time when both fear and greed were rampant. Uh, I do hope you took something away from this video because history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes.